How's it going guys? Hope you're having a great day. This is Art of Zod with a Red Fox Cub Study video with commentary. I'll be going through this speed painting and commenting on what my thought processes were during each stage. I won't be able to cover everything so if there's something I might have missed out feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. So sit back and enjoy this video. So to start I always create a border around my canvas which is similar to the size of the reference. This way I know when the illustration begins and ends, so it's a good way of performing some form of composition. And as you can see now, what I'm doing is doing a straight simple blocking. It's kind of similar to doing negative space studies, so drawing in hard edge lines always works. This way I can compare the horizontal and vertical relationships of, of the subject, in this case it's the fox. So I'm going in the interior side as well, looking for shapes that I see anything of interest. These shapes will help me develop the painting side of it later on. So as you can see, uh, I'm, I'm still keep, keeping the idea of using hard edge lines. Hard edge lines always works because it's good for finding angles. Angles and, and you, can, you can do comparison, comparisons a lot easier with, uh, with hard edge lines than curved lines. So here I'm basically doing the uh, blocking of the background. Just spending time looking at the colour capturing the colour. Take as long as you want on this on this part because I've done it for so long it, it, I've kind of developed this way of doing stuff. So now I've moved on to um, blocking in the, the fox itself. So I've turned off the background just to quickly get the shape down. So now I've turned the background back on and I now start the colour capture. Now this is where most of your time will get taken up because you're observing and looking and filling in the shapes that you see, the filling in the shapes of colour. And as you can see, the background plays an important part of colouring things in. Background affects the, 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 the subject. If if I turn the background off, if I was to turn the background off, then the colours, if you're trying to do observation painting without the background, the colours may change. So it's always good, it's always good to, to do the background first, as always, and then do the foreground after. So now I'm still going through the phase of blocking in, I'm still capturing the colour. Another th another technique that's really handy with, when it comes to digital arts, um, because I'm using a hard edge brush here, um, and the hard edge brush I'm using right now is by uh, uh, an artist named Stephen w Stephen Wolfer, Stephen Wolfer, if I believe, <laughs> can't pronounce his name properly. Um, I'll post his link in the description below as well if anyone wants to use one of his brushes. It's a really good drafting brush. I've been using it quite often for my studies and it has a nice texture as well. And the nice thing about it, because it's hard edge color, it means that there's no, there's no opacity. But what I tend to do sometimes is I set the brush to 50% and then I will grab a color from the background, which is the green, and I'll overlay and I'll paint over some of the fox in that 50% and then I'll switch it back to 100% and I drop that value. So this way you get kind of get the a mixture of the two colors coming together because as I said before, the, 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 the environment affects the subject or the foreground, whatever it is you're trying to paint. So this makes it part of the part of the picture, which is important. What you don't want is, is to have two separate things going on. So uh, as you can see here, I'm still subdividing, subdividing the shapes now, going further in, trying to capture all these colours and I'll, I sometimes go over the same areas again to, to fix colours that I think are not right. So colour capturing is, 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 a, is a skill in its own. It's very hard to master but with a lot of practice you can get there. So I'm fixing the underside of the muzzle there and the cheekbones. Some refinement can come in many ways here, as you can see. I, I, I'm just basically adding things, taking things away, overlapping, applying more colour over more colour until I'm satisfied with the result. Um, if I'm usually, most of the time, I'm never satisfied. So I'll, I'll go over it again. As you can see, I've, I've, I've shrunk my brush down even smaller, the same brush and I've just basically added little refinements to make it stand out so with the ears 
than eyes. Add a, add a little, bit of little bit of reflection there just to give it some personality because it looks a bit weird if I'm not doing not doing the, any reflective eyes when it looks like more, more sp spooky. So this painting was done on Twitch. So if anyone was, if anyone was wondering, this, this, whole, this whole demonstration was done on there. Uh, it took just under four hours, I believe. So I'm still subdividing here, just refining with a hard edge brush. Uh, so I've set myself, I've set my brush to 50% there, but then push back up to 100% once I've got the value. Keeping the environmental values affecting the fox, so that way it looks part of the canvas. So I'm getting close to the blending side of things. I've always been asked questions about blending, and it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky task in itself because blending can go two ways. One, you can you can overblend something and it looks really muddy. And if you blend just the right amount, then you have something that's good. So I'm, I've been trying to develop this this habit of keeping things less less blendy. That's the right way to say it. Blend less. Only blend where necessary. So I'm still kind of refining, still the hard edge color, refining. There we go. I think we're getting close to the blending side now. Just tinkering the nose, added all the muzzle follicles. So I've blurred out the background there. Because the doesn't it's not really needed. So now I start fixing the the head because I noticed when uh, the head was slightly mine was slightly tilted up a bit, so I've just re rejigged that. So I'm adding more refinements here and there. Again, this is where I've mentioned that I, or I I'm never satisfied. I always go back and forth, and and yeah, now I'm switched to blending now. So I'm just basically bringing colors together in in some areas, not everywhere. So. Places where color can, can merge into one. I don't want to be focusing the, the blur or heavily on the face too much, but just areas, slight areas of subtlety. As I said, as I said before, uh, when you over blend stuff, it, it can look muddy. So one trick is to, if you do blending, always add some saturated value back. Because the moment you start blending color, you start to lose the potency that the two colors had. So when it's mixed together, it ends up desaturating. So it's always good to add a bit of saturation back. So as you can see, I'm still going going through the blending phase here, just lightly blending areas, not, not too much, but just areas just to make things look nice. So now I'm focused on the belly area now, I believe. So sometimes I do stop there, make slight pauses, and that's probably because I'm talking to someone on Twitch. Because <laughs> this is a direct recording from Twitch. And sometimes it's difficult to paint and talk at the same time, so... Yeah, it's, it's tricky. It's very tricky. So now I'm focusing on the, the lower part. Just making the little slight bits of detail on, on the head as well as I go along. So I'm always I'm always uh, scanning everything. So I'm, I'm never focused on one particular area for too long. I'm always bouncing all over the place. And I think that's good because when you focus on one area for too long, you're, 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 not, really fo you're not really paying attention to the rest of it. You're to treat the painting that you're, you're working on as one entire unit. So you should look at it everything as a whole at once and it's always good to bounce between two areas or any area so that way your your, your focus is always refreshed when you come back to another, another area of the subject in this case the fox so now I'm working on the belly part and again just adding slight blending on on just on, on areas where 
if I see any hard edges like coming together, I can just, just soften them out. Just soften them. Not too much, just the light soften so they kind of push themselves away. So I'm now do some definition on the on the fox here on, along the on, along its body. This part was tricky, I found, because there's so much little indents of fur. And people have asked me how to how to render fur, and I've I've always said look at reference. Always look at reference. The more you look at reference, the more you start to understand how fur behaves and how it looks. This is one of many ways, just observing and painting. Find a pattern that you see common in most animals. But in this case, the fox's body tends to have really relatively short fur, so it's not too hairy. As you can see now, the final part of the painting is, well, the most fun part is just doing the details. So the, this is where I go to a really fine brush and just really push the areas of interest back in there again. So areas of interest, which are the details. So I'm basically adding some of the detail back along the ear tips and the muzzle arch. This is just to keep the focal interest along the fox's face. So I'm adding a bit of green there, green reflectance from the from the environment that's affecting the white fur under the fox's fox's muzzle. Things like that, just finalizing things, adding edges, extra fur on the edges. This part is always the last thing you should ever do on detail. Small little things, fixes and stuff. So yeah. There you have a fox cub. So I hope this video has been useful for you guys to watch and understand. I mean, there's only so much I can cover in a commentary video, but as always, if you have any questions, hit them in the comments below. I will try and get back to you on that. Uh, a special thanks goes to Alana Hawker for the lovely photo and image reference I used. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and enjoy the rest of this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more weekly video updates. See you soon.